You've went. How long ago was your injury again, Jesse? You been- uh, it was five years in January. Nice. Don't you got? You guys have the same date, don't you? The same injury date or something? Yes, we do. Right? The eighteenth of January. Wow. Yeah, we were both hit on January. Or we both had our accidents on January eighteen, which is kind of crazy. Um, Jesse was originally diagnosed uh, as complete, but over the years after she got her mental health right and her physical health and started like working out and going to school, um, her body was like, okay, cool, time to heal. Very similar to my story where I was diagnosed incomplete, but I pretty much got no, I got nothing back until like five, six years later. And then I started noticing like, oh, cool, I'm not poisoning my body with drugs anymore and I'm eating good foods and I'm working out. So my body's starting to wake up. And I think that's um, a very interesting testament because I know in the beginning, I think a lot of people with spinal cord injuries are told like, oh, if you don't heal within the first, you know, 12 to 18 months, you're never going to get anything back. And both of our experiences have kind of been that that's Hmm. not true. They tell you that up to two years what you get back is all you're ever going to get and then after that it's a wash when in reality i've had more return after that two years than i ever did before it and so i started paralyzed from the middle of my chest down and now i can crawl i have almost full core strength and i'm slowly building it and it's that process of building it because we live in a world where you can get instant results you can put your food in the microwave and in 30 seconds it's hot instant gratification and this injury is not something you can get that from yeah Yeah, spinal spinal cord injury is definitely something that uh forcibly teaches you patience like takes your wrists and twist it and punches you in the back of the head and be like you're gonna wait for this and you're gonna work hard for it it's like a bully it's weird how the word that is used medically is like complete or incomplete but like i didn't realize this until like talking to a bunch of different spinal cord injury folks that like it's all kind of based on like a test right so like even if you're deemed complete it's see it's to me complete sounds like oh it's done you know like the word complete it's completed you know like the the injury is fully complete but it's like you can regain some things back which is kind of crazy like even um like aaron baker like he was like a complete quad but he's like walking around a little bit and stuff and like i mean he walked across the desert like, so it's kind of a weird word to even use the word complete for in, for injuries when it's like you can gain stuff back. Well, the way that they determine that as well is they stick their finger in your butt and they're like, all right, can you feel this? Can you clamp down on this? And if you can't, you're a complete injury, which is just, it's crap. So it's- Richard could clamp. Right. He, no, he, I can't. Uh. Uh-uh. No, I can't clamp. I got a. I got a loose butthole. I don't have a tight <laughs> butthole. He can squeeze it. That's why. No. That's I'm why poop falls out all the time. It. Poop is always falling out of my butt. I got a loose butthole. You know they. You know they. How they tested me. <laughs> they tested me with um with uh Q-tips and needles. That's the Asia scale. So there's yeah. the two things you have: complete and incomplete. Which is, can you clamp on your butthole? Can you feel when a finger is in your butthole? And then you have the Asia scale where they go down your entire, they have these points. So like they have your hands, there's a couple fingers they do, they do your face, and then they do all the way down your body. And it's a pinprick or a Q-tip soft touch. And it's like, can you feel this? Can you feel this? What scale can you feel this on? And that's what determines if you're Asia A to D, which D is the one that's most normal. A is your complete, you have nothing below your level of injury. Yeah, if you're an able-bodied person, you're probably a D or you're not even, even on the even scale. A, you're not even on the scale, but yeah, the more com- like complete just means Asia A and then Asia B, Asia C, Asia D. So I think if I remember correctly, I started off at like Asia B, like a like a high like a middle B, high B, and I'm probably more towards a C now. I don't I don't know. I haven't got it tested. I don't think that's for me at least. I've never got it redone. Well, because I was in the clinical trials, they put a neuro scaffold in my spinal cord when they fused my spine. And the idea is to reconnect the disconnect. And that itself, you know, so many people go out to do clinical trials after a spinal cord injury. And I'm like, if that's what you want to do, do it. But keep in mind that you have to have an open mind and not put all your hope in this. Because I found myself at the 30 day, the three month, the six month, the one year, the two year, I would become super, super depressed around the time of the exam. Because I'm constantly being reminded of the what I'm not getting, that I'm not recovering, that it's not working. And so I went to my two-year exam, and I came out T6 Asia A still. And then wow. two months later, I started regaining sensation and movement. 
That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's nuts. There's there's a lot of different interesting experimental type treatments that that we that they test on people with spinal cord injuries but the the hard part about it is there's no control group like there's no group of 10 people that are like for science i will allow you to cut (laughs) and damage my spinal cord pay me a hundred thousand dollars and then we can test out this product it's like no they test it out on people that have already been shot people that have already been crashed people that have already have fallen like people that have already got their their Mm -hmm. shit jacked it's not like you can have a control of like how the injury happened either like everyone's spinal cord injury is like super crazy different so it's not like there's any like 10 group of people that you could find that's the same exact level of injury the same exact way same level of function all that shit it's like it's that would be possible yeah it's all super experimental and like jesse yours was put in you were on not you weren't even conscious right your family put in yours. yeah yeah so my parents actually signed for me i was the second person in the united states to receive this trial device Uh, My neurosurgeon actually implanted six of the 17, and I was his first. My parents signed for me. I wake up. They're like, hey, this is the only opportunity you're going to have to walk again. So here it is. And I was close with the first patient. And so seeing firsthand him go from a T12 complete to an incomplete in the first 30 days, Asia A to Asia B or high C in the first six months, and I wasn't getting any of that. And so there's been 17 patients enrolled in this specific trial, and two of them actually died of complications due to their injuries, not from the trial device. Uh, Seven of the 17 went from complete to incomplete, and then out of those seven, four went from Asia A to Asia C, which is a huge, huge difference in somebody's quality of life. And I just, I believe that there's not enough follow-up. It's like you have a spinal cord injury and then you're sent on your way. What if we checked in with these patients at five years, checked in with them at 10 years, which as I, as far as I know, Craig Hospital is the only place that does that. But then we can maybe see how are these people living their life and then, oh, they went from a complete to an incomplete like Aaron Baker. Totally. Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you'd like to see the full episode, click right here. If you'd like to subscribe, click here. If you'd like more clips, we got two more right over here. <laughs>